how can I disable the bypass key in Microsoft Access from my application so that users cannot use the shift key to open the Access database to look at the tables and queries and things like that. And once I sort of lock the bypass key so that users can't get in there, how can I enable it again in a way that, you know, a normal sort of regular user won't understand how to do that? I'm your host, Sean McKenzie, and today we're going to talk about how to set the bypass key in Microsoft Access, how to enable and disable it uh, so that you can add a little bit of security to your application. It's, it's not going to stop a determined user or a very technical user, but for the majority of regular users, it will stop them from getting into the back end. Without further ado, let's get to our bypass key in Microsoft Access. Looking to hire resources for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description. Okay, so you might remember in our last video, we created this application and we looked at some of our startup options, like putting those, those captions up at the top there and limiting what users can see, you know, in, the, in their uh, menus and ribbons and things to just things that are not really um, database related, you know, to working with the data right, you know, on the tables. And uh, we created a quit but created a quit button so we could um, quit. But we also, we, dem we demonstrated how to open the database using shift plus double click or you can click on it once and then hold shift and press enter. Um, and then the database will open and you'll see if you if you are using an ACCDB, it'll have all the objects displayed to the user, which is might not be something that you want. Um, and so what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to use the create ribbon. We're going to start a new module, and uh, and we're going to do a little bit of programming here to show you how you can sort of turn off that that shift open, um, you know. Uh, using the bypass so that all of your auto execs and everything get ignored. Um, so this will help you to, to provide a little bit of security on your database and uh, we'll get started here. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a subroutine and I'm just going to call it LockDB and uh, I'm going to start with the error handling because um, this is a procedure that basically it says, you know, set my bypass key equal to false uh, but the problem is is your your file might not have that property yet and so if it doesn't have that property what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to catch the error and then we're going to create it create the property when the error is thrown and so as you can see here um, down below below sub error here I'm creating the error trap so um, and then up at the top I'm going to say on error go to my error trap and, and what we're going to do is um, under this sub error here is if we get the case 3270 which uh, I believe is property does not exist um, then we're going to um, we're going to set the property to false and that will stop people from getting into our system. Uh, but what I'm going to do here first is I'm going to uh, do the case else. For every other error, uh, we're just going to, you know, uh, give, you know, tell the user what the error was that happened. And I'll put an end select on there right now. And we're going to fill in the uh, 3270 there. We're going to fill that after we do the main part of the procedure. But as you can see, we're doing a select case. And uh, this is our sub error. This is our error block. And uh, we're going to use that 3270 uh, to basically uh, to create the uh, property and then set it to false. But we're not going to do that part of it just yet. I'm going to go back up here first and we're going to do the main part of the procedure, which is basically um, it'll set the bypass key uh, equal to uh, false. Um, if it exists. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll dim DB as database. 
I'm going to dim uh, PRP as property. And uh, this is a pretty straightforward procedure. We can go set database equal to current DB. And then after that, we'll simply put our db.properties. Uh, we'll just set uh, properties. We're going to specify which property. It's the allow bypass key. And we're just going to set that to false. And that will stop people from using the shift key to bypass all of your, your, your startup options. Uh, but it will only do it if that allow bypass key exists on the database. And if it does not exist, it's going to go to the error. And that's where we're going to set that in the 32, under 3270 there. Um, and uh, what we can do as well here is we can set a, basically display a message box to, for the user just to say, you know, lock confirmed. Um, and then you'll know that that file is now locked. And even if you go in and try to use the shift key, um, then it will, uh, it, <clears throat> then it will stop you from doing that. And we're going to put an exit sub uh, just before our error block. And the exit sub will base it'll exit the subroutine, so it won't go into the error part of the code. And uh, and then uh, we can sort of go from there. So now that we we're asking it to set the bypass key up above, if this is a brand new file or you know a copy of your system that hasn't had this set yet, um, then you can catch the error property does not exist or uh, property not found. Um, you can set the PRP equal to db.create property, and then you'll specify the allow bypass key name. Uh, you're going to create that as a Boolean, and uh, and uh, we'll I I believe the initial uh, uh, value is true, and we can move on from there. Oh, it looks like I broke it already. Oh, I got I got an extra closing bracket there. So there we go. Yeah, the allow bypass key. Uh, db boolean and true and then uh, we could just set it to false right there but I will explicitly set it here we'll say db.properties uh, append uh, our, our PRP and that's gonna put that uh, property it's gonna append that to, to the database properties and then uh, from there uh, we can set it to false um, you know uh, you can set the initial value to false uh, but we'll do it explicitly here. Um, we'll say db.properties allow bypass key equals false. And uh, and that's really it. I mean, we can put a message here for the user, just like we did for the lock confirmed that you see above. Uh, the, the message box will say, you know, the bypass properties wasn't found. So, you know, we'll create that. And uh, we can, you know, put a VB information just for a simple OK only uh, message box. And then we can also uh, put the title in there. And then you can see this is the uh, procedure here. So there, you know, if it, if it is not 3270, it's going to go into that other um, uh, case else. And that will you just give the error of whatever came up there. And so we're pretty much done with, you know, setting it to false uh, so that we block the users from using that. Uh, but we also need to have a way back in to unlock it. Uh, and there's there are many ways that you can do this. Um, this is my preferred way is to um, is to have a, a shortcut that's going to pass a parameter in when you start the database that is from a shortcut that only you have and uh, will allow you to unlock uh, any of your front end files in case you need to do something. Um, so uh, often you will lock the files just before you give them to users um, and then you might unlock a development copy or something like that. So all we're going to do here is we are going to um, use the database uh, uh, again, a variable, and we'll set that to current DB. And then we're going to use the command uh, function, which is basically it, it's when you pass in a command in the startup, when you uh, shortcut or command from the command line in Windows, 
that you can pass in some parameters in to access, which is really nice. Um, and uh, so you're also learning about that today, apparently. And uh, so if the command is uh, something that you make up, I'll say a abc123, then we'll set db.properties and the allow bypass key uh, uh, property equal to true. And that's going to unlock this file so that we can go ahead and uh, we can go ahead and shift open it again and work on our stuff, um, you, know, you know, code and, and your queries and your forms and reports and things like that. Um, and then once we've set that to true, we can leave a, we can do a message box saying, you know, unlock command received, you know, our bypass key is now enabled. And so I'll save that module. I'm just going to save it as a uh, utility here and uh, I'll say OK and I think that's all I really need to do here I've got my DB variable set up there's our command uh, function which is a built-in function and that's gonna read whatever command has been passed into access at the time that you open the file and so you're gonna learn a cool trick about how to do that today as well so uh, you're you're definitely getting a few techniques here Okay, so I think we're ready to see this all in action now. We have one last step that we have to do, which is to put that check command somewhere uh, where it's going to get executed. And we're going to go back to our startup form. Um, this is one of the places that you can put it, is if you have a startup form, um, then we can go back to our on load, or you can use on current or on... Uh, on open, um, which I have a video. Uh, check out my video on those if you haven't checked that one out yet, how to use those, but we'll use form load today. And all I'm going to do is after the form maximizes, I'm going to say check command. And so it'll execute that little uh, bit of code that will try to, you know, see if there was anything passed in when the user opened the database. And if it happened to be that bypass key, or pardon me, if it happened to be that ABC123, then it will unlock the bypass key uh, and set that to true. Um, and so um, that's a neat way of doing it. So you can have your own little custom shortcut with a little kind of password on it. Um, and then you can uh, do that. So I'll hit go to lock it. Um, and uh, there you go. So it says bypass property was not found, so it was created, which means this file didn't have that property. So it went to the error, uh, and we caught that error, and we created the bypass, um, the bypass property, and uh, and then we we set it to uh, to false. And so I'll close everything I had open there. And now if I try to shift open uh, this database. Um, we'll see that uh, I'm holding the shift key and it, and it won't let me bypass those options. I can close it using quit and I can try to open it again and hold the shift key down and it won't let me do that because I have set the bypass uh, property equal to, uh, equal to false. Um, and so, or allow bypass key equal to false. And so that's a neat little security feature um, it is not a be-all end-all, of course. There's many ways that a determined user will get in. If they really want to get in and they have some technical background, they can do all kinds of things. But for most users, this will stop them from, you know, casually shift opening it in order to take a look at your code or your, your tables and stuff like that. So there we go. Um, so I've, I've got my... my uh, file and I cannot do the shift open but now I need a way to unlock it in case I actually want to continue to work on that file or you know or make changes or whatever and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on my desktop and I'll go new and then shortcut and here's what I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paste in now you're gonna have to find the location of your access file uh, probably some on some systems you can just type in msaccess.exe and this works. In my case, I'm going to put in bracket or not in brackets in quotes the path to my Microsoft Access exe, 
And then as an argument to that, I'm going to specify with a space and then the location of my access front end file that's, that I'm going to open. And then I'm going to use the backslash CMD. And then after that, that's going to trigger it to look for uh, an argument there uh, or a parameter. And I put in ABC123 as the uh, as the code that's going to be uh, fed in at the time that that file is open using MS Access here, as you can see, as I highlighted. So I'll hit next, and uh, I'll go ahead and I'll I'll call this unlock candy, and I'll hit OK or I'll hit finish there. And so now I have a nice little shortcut here with the unlock key for that particular file, um, and so. Now what I can do is if I if I double click that, uh, it's going to fire that up and it's going to open that locked uh, database file and it'll say unlock command received. Um, now you're good to go. So in order to get into your tables and everything, you have to close it uh, and then shift open it um, as if you were shift opening for you know your development, your regular development. So as you can see, we can go in here. We can open, we can see all the tables and forms and modules and reports and things if we had those. I can close it and I can shift open it again, no problem, um, because the, uh, the property stays at whatever you set it, you know, as long, until you set it uh, again. So if I put my cursor in and lock it again, um, you'll see now it says lock confirmed. If I hit OK, um, then now, when I close my file again, and I, if I try to shift open it uh, using, you know, um, just regular means, um, then it won't let me do that shift open, and it opens directly to the uh, welcome screen there. And uh, and then, of course, I could go ahead and unlock it again if I want. Um, and that's uh, that's how the unlock works. I can hit quit, um, and then if I shift open. Um, then it will allow me back in. So as you can see, you can use this to go back and forth. And as you can see, you can get a little flexibility in sort of hiding things from your users. And that's how you can handle the bypass key. Need help or coaching on your project? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Hope you enjoyed today's discussion on how to set the bypass key in Microsoft Access. If you like what you saw today, please give the video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell when you see the bell, and if you have any questions or comments, put those in the comment section below. Have a great day, have a safe day, and I'll catch you next time.